Hey dear, welcome back to the world of cross-dressing stories. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Now, let's dive into the story. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm 22 and just about wrapping up college in our little town where everyone knows your business before you do. I've always been on the quiet side, not too many waves, that's me. Dad's pretty traditional, kind of stern, but fair, and mom, she's the heart of our home, always making sure I had a warm hug when the world seemed too sharp. This one weekend though, mom and dad decided I needed a break, a change from my daily routines and the monotonous buzz of our town. Why don't you spend the weekend with your Aunt Clara in the city? Mom suggested one evening at dinner, her voice tinged with a hint of excitement for me. Aunt Clara isn't just any aunt, she's a burst of color on a drab canvas. In her 50s, she's the life of any party and infamous for throwing the most talked about gatherings. Her friends adore her and she's almost a local celebrity with her flamboyant style and infectious laughter. So that Friday afternoon with a small bag packed and a mix of nerves and excitement bubbling in my stomach, I boarded the train to the city. The rhythmic clacking of the train tracks echoed my racing thoughts. What did this weekend have in store for me? Aunt Clara's place was as vibrant as her personality. Nestled in a bustling part of the city, her home was a quaint Victorian-style house, but with a twist, it was painted in bright, cheerful colors. As I stepped up to her door, it swung open, and there she was, just as I remembered, her arms wide open. Jamie, oh, I've missed you, darling, she exclaimed, pulling me into a bear hug that smelled like jasmine and adventure. Her energy was contagious, and within minutes, I felt my usual reservations melt away. She ushered me inside, chattering away about her plans for the weekend. Little did I know, the weekend ahead was going to be anything but ordinary, and it would challenge everything I knew about myself. As Aunt Clara would say, it was going to be fabulously unforgettable. As the sun dipped below the city skyline, casting an orange glow through the large bay windows, Aunt Clara's kitchen buzzed with hivity. She was a whirlwind of energy, tossing together her famous appetizers and adjusting the eclectic decor for her much-anticipated kitty party. I had just settled on the couch, flipping through a magazine, when her phone rang. Aunt Clara's face fell as she listened intently, her vibrant energy dimming with each word. Oh no, you can't be serious, she muttered into the phone, her other hand waving animatedly. She hung up with a heavy sigh and turned to me, her usual sparkle temporarily clouded. Jamie, darling, you won't believe this. The dancer I hired for tonight's entertainment just canceled. And on such short notice too, she exclaimed, her hands on her hips as she paced the room. Her friends were expecting a performance and Aunt Clara hated to disappoint. Seeing her so distressed, I asked tentatively if there was anything I could do to help. She stopped pacing, looked at me with a spark of her usual flair and said, well, actually, there might be something. With a mischievous grin, she proposed a plan so bold it made my heart skip a beat. Jamie, how do you feel about stepping into the spotlight tonight? I mean, as our star performer? Before I could process, she added, and I don't mean just any performer, I mean as a dazzling woman. I blinked, unsure if I'd heard her right. Me? Dress up as a woman? Perform? Sensing my hesitation, Aunt Clara sat next to me, her tone softening. I know it's a lot to ask, Jamie, but think about it. It could be quite the adventure, stepping out of your comfort zone. It's just us tonight, a safe space among friends. Her friends were like her, open, adventurous, accepting. It was one of those crossroads moments, the kind that asks you if you're willing to leap into the unknown. Why not? I found myself saying, my voice a mix of nervous excitement and curiosity. Let's do it, Aunt Clara. Let's give them a show they won't forget. Her face lit up, brighter than any room she'd ever decorated. Oh, Jamie, you're absolutely wonderful. Trust me, we're gonna have so much fun with this, she exclaimed, pulling me into another hug. As we headed upstairs to her walk-in closet, a treasure trove of fabrics, colors, and styles, my heart raced. I was about to embark on a journey far outside anything I'd ever imagined. And somewhere deep down, a part of me was surprisingly exhilarated about the idea. This was more than just dressing up. It was about embracing an entirely new persona, if only for a night. It was about the thrill of the unknown, the playfulness of masquerade, and maybe just maybe discovering a side of myself I never knew existed. 
Aunt Clara's bedroom was like stepping into a backstage dressing room, filled with bright lights around the mirror, racks of dresses and drawers brimming with makeup. She patted the seat in front of her vanity. Sit here, Jamie. Let's make some magic happen. As I settled into the chair, my heart thudded with a mix of nerves and excitement. Aunt Clara's hands were steady and confident as she began my transformation, explaining each step with the ease of someone who's mastered their craft. First, we'll start with a clean base. Good makeup starts with good skin care, she advised, dabbing my face with moisturizer. She then meticulously applied foundation, concealer, and powder, blending them into my skin with an artist's precision. Makeup is like painting on a living canvas, Aunt Clara mused, selecting colors that would enhance my features. She taught me about contouring and highlighting, which sculpted my face, softening my jawline, and accentuating my cheekbones. Next came the eye makeup. Eyes are the window to the soul. Let's give them some curtains worth opening, she chuckled, brushing on eyeshadow, lining my eyes to appear larger, and finishing with several coats of mascara that made my eyelashes flutter like never before. The transformation continued as Aunt Clara selected a wig, a long, flowing brunette that framed my face beautifully. She showed me how to secure it, ensuring it wouldn't slip during my performance. Now for the dress, she announced, pulling out a stunning emerald green gown that sparkled under the room's lights. The fabric felt smooth against my skin, and as I stepped into it, she zipped it up and it hugged my body in ways I couldn't have imagined. She added accessories, dangling earrings and a delicate bracelet, each piece complementing the next. Then came the heels. I was wary, but Aunt Clara just smiled, handing me a pair of modest heels. Balance is key, darling. Let's start easy. Standing in them was one thing, but walking was another. She held my hand, guiding me back and forth across the room. Small steps, Jamie, heel to toe, heel to toe, she instructed gently. As we worked, Aunt Clara's enthusiasm was infectious and her encouragement constant. When we finally finished, she stood me in front of a full length mirror. The reflection staring back was someone new, someone bold and beautifully feminine. I hardly recognized myself and for a moment I was speechless. Look at you, Aunt Clara exclaimed with pride. Isn't she wonderful? I couldn't help but smile, feeling a mix of astonishment and pride. The nervousness I had felt earlier began to transform into something else, a thrilling anticipation for what was to come. The world outside that room felt both distant and eagerly awaiting this new character I was about to bring to life. It was a revelation, not just of a new image, but of hidden potentials and unexplored parts of my personality. This wasn't just dress up, it was a form of expression I had never allowed myself to experience. As we prepared to head downstairs, Aunt Clara gave me a reassuring squeeze on my shoulder. You're going to be spectacular, Jamie. Just enjoy every moment. Stepping out of that room, I felt like I was stepping into a new world, one where I could be whoever I wanted to be, even if just for a night. This was more than just a party performance. It was a debut of a side of myself I had never known. The moment had arrived. The lights dimmed and soft, ambient music filled the living room, transformed into a makeshift stage with twinkling fairy lights and elegant decor. Aunt Clara gave me a final encouraging nod as I stood behind the curtain she had rigged up for my entrance. My heart raced and my hands felt clammy, but the excitement was palpable. I was no longer just Jamie, I was Jasmine, a persona created from fabric, makeup, and a daring leap into the unknown. As the music shifted to a lively beat, I took a deep breath and stepped out. The room went silent for a heartbeat, and then, as I walked into the light, applause erupted. Aunt Clara's friends, a lively and eclectic group, cheered as I made my grand entrance. Their faces reflected genuine surprise and delight, which eased my nerves instantly. I let the music take over, moving with a grace I didn't know I possessed, each step and twirl feeling more natural as I went along. My performance was not just about the dance moves, it was a showcase of a newfound confidence, a celebration of embracing a new aspect of myself. The crowd's energy fueled me, their claps and cheers lifting my spirits higher. I found myself genuinely enjoying the spotlight, the rhythmic flow of the music guiding me through each motion. As the last notes faded, the room burst into another round of applause. I curtsied, staying in character, and the crowd responded with laughter and more clapping. 
Aunt Clara rushed over, hugging me tightly. You were absolutely magnificent, Jasmine, she whispered, her eyes twinkling with pride. The rest of the evening shifted into a cheerful blur of music and light conversation. But one guest, in particular, seemed to have taken a special interest in me. Mrs. Robinson, a close friend of Aunt Clara's, approached me with a warm, intriguing smile. She was an elegant woman, known for her charm and wit, and tonight, her attention was all on Jasmine. You truly stole the show tonight, my dear, she said, her voice smooth and inviting. Her compliments were flattering, and her demeanor suggested a playful curiosity. I must admit, I'm quite captivated by your performance. And by you, she added, her gaze lingering a moment longer than necessary. I felt a mix of thrill and nervousness at her words. Her forwardness was unexpected, adding a layer of intrigue to the evening. We engaged in conversation, her questions thoughtful, often about my experience dressing up and performing. I played along, staying in character, intrigued by how natural it felt to interact as Jasmine. As the party wound down, Mrs. Robinson stayed close, her presence both comforting and exhilarating. Her interest in Jasmine sparked a curiosity in me, too, about how others saw me in this new light and how I perceived myself through their reactions. It was a night of discovery, not just of hidden talents, but also of new social dynamics and personal boundaries being gently tested. The party eventually ended, but the experiences of the night lingered, leaving a lasting impression on me. It was more than just a successful performance. It was an evening that challenged and expanded my understanding of identity and expression. As the last of the guests began to trickle out, their laughter and compliments still echoing through the house, Mrs. Robinson lingered. With the same enigmatic smile she'd shared throughout the evening, she leaned in closer and whispered, Jasmine, how about we cap this enchanting evening with a little adventure? A drive around the city, perhaps? The invitation caught me off guard, but the thrill of the night's escapades still pulsed through my veins. Her offer was tempting, a chance to extend the magic of the evening a little longer. I'd love to, I responded my voice a mix of Jamie's reality and Jasmine's newfound allure. Mrs. Robinson's eyes lit up with delight. Wonderful, let me just grab my keys, she said, her heels clicking gracefully as she walked away. Minutes later, we were in her sleek convertible, the city lights blurring into streams of gold as we drove under the starlit sky. The cool night air was refreshing, and the open road ahead was like a promise of untold stories. As we drove, Mrs. Robinson initiated a series of conversations that delved deeper than the usual party chatter. She asked about my thoughts on beauty, identity, and freedom, topics that resonated deeply with the persona I had adopted for the night. Her questions were insightful, pushing me to reflect on my experiences not just as Jamie, but as Jasmine. What does dressing like this mean to you? She inquired, her tone both curious and respectful. I found myself opening up more than I had anticipated. It's liberating, in a way I hadn't expected. It feels like stepping into a different part of myself that I don't usually show the world. I admitted, the city lights casting reflections on my face. Mrs. Robinson nodded thoughtfully. It's wonderful, isn't it? How clothing and makeup can transform us, allow us to explore parts of ourselves we never knew existed. Our conversation flowed as smoothly as the ride, and soon she was taking me to some of her favorite spots in the city. We stopped at a scenic overlook that provided a breathtaking view of the skyline. Under the moonlight, the city seemed serene, a stark contrast to the bustling streets below. At each landmark, Mrs. Robinson shared a piece of her own history with the city, stories of her youth, her dreams, and her adventures. It was as if each sight was a chapter of her life, and she was reading them aloud to me. I listened, fascinated, and realized that this drive was more than just a simple outing. It was a journey through her past, guided by the illuminating presence of the moon. The night grew deeper, and the city quieter, but the drive continued, each turn bringing a new revelation, each stop a moment of shared understanding. I remained in character, but the lines between Jamie and Jasmine began to blur. Intertwined by the threads of genuine human connection, and the raw honesty of our conversations. It was an exploration, not just of the city, but of the complex landscapes of identity and expression. As the city's iconic clock tower chimed in the distance, marking the passage of time, 
I realized that this drive, this night, would be a defining moment in my life, one that challenged my perceptions and expanded my horizons in ways I could never have imagined. As the clock struck midnight, the city around us seemed to pause, holding its breath under the soft glow of the moonlight. Mrs. Robinson pulled the car over at a quiet, tree-lined park that overlooked the river, its surface shimmering like a mirror reflecting the night sky. We stepped out and the gentle breeze carried a hint of the coming dawn. The serene environment felt like the perfect backdrop for the revelation I knew I had to make. The night, as magical as it had been, was drawing to a close, and with it, the persona of Jasmine needed to find closure too. Standing there looking out over the water, I felt the weight of my decision. The fear of how Mrs. Robinson might react to learning that Jasmine was really Jamie, a college kid stepping out of his comfort zone for just one night, battled with my desire to be honest, to reveal my true self. The liberation that came with being Jasmine had been exhilarating, but now the authenticity of Jamie needed to come forward. Turning to her, I took a deep breath. Mrs. Robinson, there's something I need to tell you, I began, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. Tonight has been incredible, and I've cherished every moment and every story you've shared, but I need you to know that I am not Jasmine, not really. Her expression was one of attentive calmness as she listened. I'm Jamie, I continued. This was all a part of a surprise performance for Aunt Clara's party. I didn't expect the night to turn into this, into something so real and meaningful. To my relief, her smile was warm, understanding. Jamie, she said softly, knowing this doesn't change the beauty of tonight. If anything, it makes it even more special. You showed me a side of you that many might never see, but it's as real as any other part of you. Her acceptance washed over me like the river's gentle currents, soothing and encouraging. We talked a little more, reflecting on the evening and what it meant for both of us. As we drove back, the city seemed to awaken slowly, and so did a new understanding within me. When I returned home on Sunday evening, the familiarity of my small town felt different, as if I was seeing it through new eyes. My parents noticed a change in me, too. There was a new confidence in my step, a lightness to my demeanor. Sitting in my room that night, I reflected on the weekend, dressing as Jasmine, performing with unexpected joy, engaging in profound conversations with Mrs. Robinson. Each moment had contributed to a profound journey of self-discovery. I had explored the boundaries of my identity, danced along the edges of my comfort zones, and found acceptance in the unlikeliest of places. The lessons of the weekend were clear and would resonate with me for years to come. Identity is not just about how we see ourselves, but also how we allow others to see us. Acceptance comes not only from others, but from within. And sometimes, stepping into someone else's shoes, even just for a night, can open up a world of understanding and connection. As I lay down to sleep, the memories of the weekend enveloped me like a warm blanket. I was grateful, changed, and eager to see what other lessons life had in store. This weekend had been a chapter in my story, but it was far from the last. It was just the beginning of a broader exploration of who I was and who I could become. With that transformative weekend behind me, the seeds of a deeper exploration into cross-dressing were firmly planted. My return to the routine of college life and the familiar streets of my small town couldn't erase the vivid memories and the profound feelings of freedom and self-expression I experienced as Jasmine. As days turned into weeks, the urge to revisit that sense of liberation grew stronger. I started researching more about cross-dressing, transvestite dressing, and gender expression. It wasn't just about the clothes. It was about embracing a part of myself that I had only glimpsed during that magical weekend. I decided to start small, buying a few pieces of women's clothing online, items that could be easily hidden away. Each piece felt like a puzzle piece to a picture of myself that I was only now starting to assemble. I practiced makeup in the privacy of my room, remembering Aunt Clara's lessons and tips. Each brush stroke felt like a small rebellion against the constraints I had always felt. As I grew more comfortable, I began to seek out others who shared similar experiences. Online forums and local support groups became my havens, places where I could talk about my experiences and learn from others. 
I discovered a world where terms like MTF stories fiction and gender bender story were discussed openly and embraced as part of one's identity exploration. The decision to go out in public dressed as Jasmine again was a big one. I chose a nearby city for my first outing, somewhere I wouldn't be recognized. The night was exhilarating, filled with nervous anticipation and the thrill of being seen as I felt inside. The positive reactions I received, the feeling of acceptance, bolstered my confidence. Cross-dressing became a more regular part of my life. I found balance. There were days I was Jamie, and there were days I was Jasmine. Each persona gave me strength and taught me something valuable about myself. My family, initially surprised, came to support my journey, seeing the happiness and completeness it brought me. Inspired by my own journey and the stories I heard from others, I became involved in advocacy, working to support and educate about gender diversity and expression. I started sharing my story more publicly, hoping to inspire and comfort others who might be grappling with their own identity questions. Looking back, that weekend at Aunt Clara's wasn't just an escape from my normal life. It was the starting point of a much larger journey. It wasn't about adopting a new identity, but rather discovering the full spectrum of who I was. The lessons about identity, acceptance, and the beauty of self-expression stayed with me, shaping not only how I saw myself, but how I interacted with the world. Each step I took as Jasmine added to the narrative of my life, a continuous story of exploration, learning, and embracing the complexities of my identity. It was a story still being written, filled with chapters of both Jamie and Jasmine, each equally important to the narrative of my life.